Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a brand new Synology, the DS419 Slim. Now for those that aren't aware, Synology's disk station series of NAS is a desktop series of NAS devices aimed at home and business users. It's a whole spectrum of devices that cover both small individual you know, home users who want to connect up and stream a few things to the PS4, the smart TV and more. And it goes all the way out through surveillance and business use and editing art over the network and transcoding and Plex and all these different things. So because there's such a huge range of users out there for NAS Synology separated a number of their units into different classes. And the one that we want to talk about today is part of the Slim series. This is kind of like micro NAS. This is NAS that utilizes two and a half inch media. So that's the small drives that are found inside laptops and stuff, as well as SSD, which is also that size. On top of that, the device is designed to be low energy power consuming, um, low noise, low heat, and basically low existence in your storage environment. The result is that if you, um, many, many examples I've talked about in previous videos, like living on houseboats, like living in remote locations or places where power output is limited or that you're living on a UPS all the time and therefore kind of living with intermittent power connections, devices that require very small amounts of power to run in the long term can be very useful. Also, if you're using it for low demand specifications and your uh, requirements are just simplified backup or just DLNA streaming or low level surveillance, you don't really want a NAS that um, uses up a lot of energy, gets warm or hot in a confined location and can be detrimental to the hardware inside. And that is why the slim range exists. What an intro. But this newest version, the 419 slim, is one that's kind of met with mixed opinions. It's a follow up to the DS416 Slim and it's remarkably similar to that device. I think it retailed for about 230, 240 quid. And I think this device, I don't have a price quite, hopefully there's one on screen right now, but uh, at the time of recording, I'm imagining this will be somewhere around uh, five to 7% more expensive than that. Now, this device features a dual, a dual core CPU, 1.3 uh, gigahertz, 32 bit Arma um, Marvel, Armada based CPU, I believe the 385, as well as half a gig, that's 512 megabytes of memory. So not awe inspiring specs for you out there that have looked at things like the DS918, the 218 Plus, and some of those heavier Synology NASs. It is not designed to compete with them, it is a different range. And that's really where, where you have to keep your brain during this hardware review. I mean, we will be doing a software re review of this and overviewing how DSM, Disk Station Manager 6.2, runs on this compared with other devices, but you have to keep that mindset. You know, it's like when you've got different kinds of spoons and forks and knives in your house. There are different tools for different means. So you've got to judge it within that category and that utilization, okay? So that's enough of this incredibly long intro. Let's take a look at the device. Um, the device itself arrives in probably one of the smallest Synology boxes I've ever seen. And I used to think the mesh was in a tiny box. Now, if we open it up, we're going to have a look at the accessories we get. Um, and I do recommend if you want to see the more pictorial version of this, go into the description to the NAS Compare link. And there's all the photos there and a lot more information about this device in the review. We've got the quick start installation guide. If we open it up. We have screws for installing those two and a half inch and three and a half inch hard drives in SS. Um, just two and a half inch, sorry, force of habit. Just two and a half inch media inside there. Do remember, by the way, that not only um, can you support traditional two and a half inch hard drives, but it supports 5TB two and a half inch hard drives. That's those 15 mil height drives, which a lot of you don't know that you can't install on a number of devices. Things like home consoles, PS4, Xbox, they don't support those drives. This does. So as it's a four bay, before you raid, you're looking at at least 20 terabytes of storage with hard drives. So you've got the screws there to install them. Two RJ45 LAN cables, because this device supports link aggregation, so you can connect it via uh, two connections to a supported link aggregated switch. And that means you can get up to two gigabit ethernet uh, connectivity with the device with link aggregation or load balancing, which is slightly different. We'll save that for another video. Um, on top of that, we have got an external PSU. Uh, and do remember that this requires that clip functionality. It's not your standard three, two pin or cloverleaf connector 
This is a proprietary connector on the rear, which means that wherever you buy it, do double check that they've got your plug inside. And again, if you're buying from the guys at Span, of course I recommend them, do contact them directly. Um, on the subject of the device, we're finally in the main box, and there's the NAS. Now, that is tiny. We'll get that out of there. We've got a few NASs here behind me just to show you, um, and I've got a few that I'm testing right now during the course of the, uh, the following week or so. So, I mean, this is the size. Bring that closer up to camera for you. As you can see from the front panel there, we've got LEDs for denoting system access, drive health, network activity and more, as well as a front-mounted USB for copying to a local USB drive. The top of the device has got ventilation panels built into the top there, all the way along there. And on the base, we have that fan. Now, again, that RPM can be controlled from within DSM, but it's an unusual spot for that, and that is because of the placement of the drives. There's no panel this time around, there's no click and load, there's no screw lock trays, there's no springs, it is these trays. Now these trays have got those four screws, they install two and a half inch hard drives and SSD as described, and it's also worth highlighting that as it's a NAS, you're going to want to focus on NAS based media. Now several brands out there have produced NAS based hard drives for more micro NAS devices like this. And also Seagate, not only with their own NAS series of hard drives, have got their own Iron Wolf SSDs for NAS. And they're the drives that we're going to be using to test this device with that Seagate Iron Wolf, um, Iron Wolf Health Management. And you've got that rescue recovery included and the five-year warranty and stuff like that. I know it's a plug, but it doesn't make these things any less true. Um, so yes, there's four bays inside there. You don't have to fully populate the device. You can run it on a single disc if you want. And as you add discs, the RAID options are open to you, are like RAID 0, RAID 1, um, where you have a myriad of drives. You've got RAID 5, we can have up to one drive of failure. RAID 6, we can have up to two drives of failure. And of course, Synology Hybrid RAID. Great to know that support on this device. Though, I will say it does not arrive um, with BTRFS because of that CPU being quite low powered inside. It can do a number of things that we'll talk about more in the software review, but I will allude to the fact that it does support, I think, up to... 12 or 15 cameras in surveillance station and that's surveillance station 8.2 as well as multiple backups a multi-user creation everyone working um, synchronously and you've got DLNA media playback although Plex isn't really supported that you can still use Synology's video station photo station and music station applications to interact with your data in that media way. On top of that, you've got the mobile phone application for iOS and Android that give you a multitude of ways to communicate with the device and this does support Synology Drive, Synology Moment, and both of those into a slightly more limited capacity and along with a lot of other Synology apps. So as I say, check out the software overview to see more about that when we compare it with DSM on a bigger, bolder, and more powerful device. That is the DS419 Slim. It's a tiny little NAS, and I know for a number of you out there, it is underwhelming. You're waiting for Synology to release the big behemoth boxes, but I also know from the people that watch this video that a number of you have looked at this video because of this device's stature, because of its low power consuming nature. It is designed to be like that. When we do our comparison against the DS416, one of the things that we're going to have to address is that CPU, because it's actually a very similar CPU between the 416 Slim and the 419 Slim. In fact, it's the same CPU with a different clock speed and a slightly different revision. So a lot of you I know might be a bit put off by that, but it's how that CPU affects the output on different applications that's going to be very, very important. But this has been the DS419 Slim. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this hardware review. And again, go to the description below to find out more about this device. Stuff like the speed you're going to get out of those two link aggregated ports, those one GBEs, that USB port that really only supports BBB UPS, a wireless dongle, or um, an external storage device to back up to and from. There's, there's a lot of things to know about a device like this, and a lot of things that Synology output for their entire disk station range will apply to this but not all of them. So I recommend you check out the article and watch the videos after this. We focus more on what this device can do. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you next time.